Today we're going to build this DIY mailbox using nothing more than a table saw. Oh, and I guess technically a drill to hang it with. And a miter gauge and clamps. And screws, a tape measure, a pencil, a push stick, combination square, flush trim saw, glue, paint, sandpaper, and some sort of finish. And that's it. Just one tool. Alright, so I'm going to be making this whole thing out of a piece of maple that I got from a local lumber yard. This piece is 8.5 inches across the width, and it's S4S, which basically means that it's cleaned up on, oh, and it's 69 inches long. But like I was saying, it's cleaned up on both faces and both edges. In other words, no need for a joiner or a planer. Oh, and it's 3 quarters of an inch thick. The first thing that I did was break my piece down into three roughly equal sized chunks. Each one's just a little bit less than 23 inches long. Next I took one of the pieces and measured and marked it at 8 inches. I used this to set up the fence and rip two pieces. These are going to become the front and back panels of our mailbox. In this next shot I'm doing something sort of odd and that's essentially to cut down on the number of tools needed for the project. So you can see in the drawing here that the top has this long slot in it for the mail to stick out through. Well, normally if I was going to make something like this, I would just cut a solid top piece and then remove material to complete the shape. But instead here, so that the only cutting tool is a table saw and a standard blade, I'm going to build it up out of three pieces. Two long skinny pieces and a wider short center piece. So back at the table saw, I set my fence to about 7 eighths of an inch and ripped out a couple of strips. Then with those set aside, I set the fence to a bit over 3 and a quarter inches and ripped out a piece that'll become the bottom. I was starting to get a little low on material, so next I headed back to the garage to make sure I could plan out where I'd get my middle top piece and end cap from. And then I went back to the table saw to cut out those two pieces. Then finally, I took my two strips and middle center piece and glued them together to form a solid top. And while that was drying, I could start working on my joinery. In the drawing here, you can see how everything's going to come together. Essentially, we're going to cut a rabbit along the top, bottom, and back edge of the front and back panels, and along the back edge of the top and bottom panels. So after those are cut, then the front and back panels rabbits are going to receive the top and bottom pieces, and then the end cap will go in the remaining recess. To measure exactly how deep I would need to cut, I just held up the bottom piece to the front panel and then marked it all out. Next I set my fence and made cuts along the three edges of the top and bottom panels. Here you can start to see what I'm going for. Then before I adjusted anything, I made cuts along the backs of the top and bottom panels. After that, I just slightly bumped the fence over and then continued making cuts along all of those same edges until I had cleaned up all the material to complete the rabbits. Luckily, the pieces are pretty small, so a few minutes later and after some sanding, I had some nice clean pieces to work with. Okay, full disclosure here. So I forgot to mention that you need a protractor in the list of things you'd need to complete this project. But anyhow, next I got out my protractor and marked a 15 degree angle that I'm going to cut along the front edge of the back panel to just make the mailbox look a little bit more interesting. I also forgot to mention a scrap wood off cut straight line marker. Next, back at the table saw, I set my miter gauge to 15 degrees and made a couple passes to cut the panel to the line. The last thing that I did before calling it a day was to measure and cut a couple little pieces that I'm going to use to fill in the parts of the rabbit in the back panel that are going to be exposed after everything's assembled. This is a purely aesthetic option, but I think it'll just make the whole project feel a little bit more complete in the end. Later that night I went to the store to get some paint that's going to match our front door and put a few coats on the inside of the back panel. So while I'm doing that, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. 
Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 17,000 classes in videography, productivity, photography, and more. So this week I wanted to recommend two of their courses. The first is one that I'm personally interested in and just recently went through. And it's called Premiere Pro Lumetri. So this is the color correction panel that's built into Adobe Premiere, the editing software that I use. And the second one that I wanted to recommend is something that I think you should be interested in. And that's SketchUp for Beginners. Or if you already know a little bit about SketchUp, maybe check out one of their more advanced courses. And actually, if neither of those courses is your cup of tea, not to worry. There's literally thousands of others to choose from. So whether you're looking to pick up a new skill, advance your career, or expand on a hobby, they've definitely got something that's gonna help you out. So premium memberships begin around $10 a month for unlimited access to learning. But right now, the first 400 people that click on the link in the description below are gonna get two months for just 99 cents. I mean, you can't even get a cup of coffee for that. So seriously, go click it. All right, thanks Skillshare. Now let's get back to it. The next morning I started assembling everything. There's plenty of good glue surface here, so this should come out pretty strong. But if you wanted a little extra insurance policy, you could definitely put some screws through the back and into the bottom panel. I didn't though. Anyhow, while that was all drying, I measured the opening for the end cap and then cut it out and glued it in. The last thing I needed to make was a French cleat to hang the mailbox with. So I just took an off cut of the maple, set my blade to 45 degrees and ripped it in half. Then I marked out a straight line on the back of the mailbox and mounted one end of the cleat and two little spacer blocks so that the whole thing would sit out from the wall in equal distance on the top and the bottom. This was actually the only portion of the build where I used my drill and some screws and I didn't even show it on camera. So I could have lied, but I didn't. And that's how you know I'm a good guy. And finally, the last thing I did was trim up those little rabbit filler pieces we had cut a couple minutes back, cleaned everything up, and then finished it. When you factor in things like time, skill level, tools required, and cost of materials, this project probably has one of the highest returns on investment, design-wise, of anything I've built on this channel. I mean, think about it. You build a coffee table or something like that, how many people get to truly experience it? Your family and close friends, and that's about it. Maybe a pushy door-to-door -door solar panel salesman, if he catches you at a particularly vulnerable time. But anyhow, the thing is, that coffee table is probably going to take a lot more time and money to produce. But this? This you can build in a day. And for $28.56 worth of maple. And everybody gets to experience it. All the aforementioned people, plus neighbors, your mailman, Jehovah's Witnesses, people who steal Amazon packages left on your porch, everybody. For the people coming inside, this mailbox will be the appetizer to the main course that is the furniture you make for inside of your house. And for those not coming in, this is your outwardly facing status symbol that lets the world know, you are a man of exquisite taste who should be respected and not converted religiously, or to have his fire stick pilfered. Special thanks to Carrie Plemons, Robert Hoffman, Brad Anderson, Alex Bate, Eric Hill, and the rest of my Patreon members. You guys are my single biggest source of funding. More than any sponsor, more than AdSense, more than affiliate programs, more than anything. It's you guys that make these videos possible. So, thank you. Truly. And to those of you mentioned above, you should have some t-shirts in your mailbox real soon. If you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description below and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.